Okay. Thank you so much. Bago pong lahat, uh, again, we just like to say that uh, I guess everybody knows that uh, we are supporting the move of the government, that uh, they're putting a subway, all right, right in front of us. Well, praise God. <laughs> in the next five to six years, all right, we're going to have our own subway. Think about that. It's our first time. All right, and the very first subway is right here on Pasig. Wow! Parang hindi kayo masaya, masaya ba kayo? Hindi tayo masaya dahil syempre may traffic na yan. Eh, di ba, ano pa yung expect po natin? Ganito talaga sa Metro Manila. But uh, nevertheless, we are supporting, you know, Mayor Vico, he's one of us. But yet, we're, we're believing God that all the more, even though there's traffic everywhere, but the harvest is right there that we're going to continue to do the mission of God that God has called us to do. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. I know some of our people have a hard time coming over, but nevertheless, it doesn't matter. What's important is, at this time, it is our worship to God. Amen? Amen. Well, praise God. We are continuing on with our previous series, the one that we left before the mission series. But I want to say thank you to Pastor Jonathan for preaching a powerful message last time with Pastor Romel, Pastor Rodnell, and this is who we are. We always say this, we are a local church, but we are a global church as well. You know, we will never be the kind of church if not for missions, no? Uh, we left that last Sunday, but today we want to continue on with our preaching series on Walk the Talk. Everybody say, Walk the Talk. Can you please stand on your feet as we read God's Word today, as we continue on with our series in Psalm 119, verses 137 to 144? Psalm 119, verse 137 to 144. The Word of God would say, Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your rules. You have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried and your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is righteous forever and your law is true. Trouble and anguish have found me out, but your commandments are my delight. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. This is the word of the Lord for us today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that indeed you are the living word. And I'm asking you, Lord God, that you would speak to us that you would draw us into you, that you will cause that hunger and thirst, that we would love you as we love your word. Create that hunger and desire, especially at this time. We badly need of your word in our lives. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please take your seats. Is there any one of us here who has been in a court trial? Or meron po ba sa atin dito na you are a lawyer? Meron po bang lawyer? Anybody who's a lawyer? I know one of our victory, not victory, worship leader na hindi hiram po natin sa Metro East is a lawyer. He's not around, di ba? Meron po bang lawyer? Wala po. Okay, yung pag nasa court trial po kami, yung parang ano lang, yung... Amber, Amber, diba? parang Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, di ba? Nung nagkaroon ng trial, talagang sensationalized. Everyone was looking for, everyone was tuning in to that kind of court trial. And if people are in court trial, there's a presiding judge, correct? There are two lawyers, the prosecutor and the defense lawyer. The witnesses will be there. The accused who needs to defend himself and those people who's making the charge and accusation. When a person becomes a witness, before he goes to the witness stand, what would he do? A presiding officer will ask the person, the witness to stand, before he goes to that stand, 
He'll get a Bible, put the Bible, the left hand, on that Bible, raise his right hand, and there will be an oath, a statement to be heard by all people who will be on that court. And the oath, the, the oath goes, do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me, God. And that person would say, yes, I do. Question is, why the Bible? Why would people make a statement, give an oath, and swear to the court to tell the whole truth? The person doesn't have to do that. It's a given thing. You're in the court. You're supposed to tell the truth. But why is it that there is an oath before you make a stand and tell your side of the story? Even though there's a presiding judge, we swear by the great judge, the God who is righteous, the God who is true, that you will hold accountable to God in what you said on that court. In fact, if you make a lie, you'll be charged with perjury. But I guess more than perjury, you need to be fearful if you lie because you're making an oath before God who is true and righteous. The psalmist who wrote what we just read as our text four times, he encountered the God of truth and wrote it and said, before your word comes to truth, you are first the God of truth. He encountered the God of truth. Therefore, he chose God's word because of who this God is. Today, I'd like us to share why do we need to choose God's word? Of all the things that's happening around us, of all the offers that this world could give us, to all the problems, those lows and those highs, why do we need to choose God's word for us? My prayer is, that we will have an encounter to the author of the Bible. My prayer for you today is not just the habit of coming on a Sunday to hear the Word, but you yourself would have an encounter with the God of the Bible, the God of truth, that there is so much in this Word that you could ever imagine that this is the key to life, whatever aspect there is that you face, the Word of God has something to say in that particular situation of yours. Three reasons why we need to choose the Word of God. Are you ready? Number one, God's Word is righteous and true. Verse 137 says, Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your rules. You have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in all faithfulness. God's word is righteous and true because the author is righteous and true. If you want to pick a, a Bible, if you want to pick a book, and you're fascinated with the title of the book, you don't just get the book and read it, right? If you're in a bookstore, you, 
You open the book and look who's the author. Sino ba yung author nito? Sino ba yung sumulat nito? No matter how good the title is, but it's really about the author. Am I going to believe in what the author would say? Twelve Rules of Life by all? My, my son asked me to buy a book. Jordan Peterson. Who is Jordan Peterson? I would ask you. Who is this author? Are you sure about this author? I don't know about him, but what I heard that he became a Christian. He would give stories and have teachings about life, but he's, but the Lord got him. I'm not, I'm not endorsing him or anything. I'm just giving an example. But what I'm saying is for you to read the book, you got to check the author. And the psalmist would highlight who the author of the book is. In verse 37 and 38, he lighted it by saying, Righteous is the one who is the author, the Lord. His rules are right. In all righteousness, he appointed his word. And in all faithfulness, the character and integrity will make a person or a leader credible. What makes us tick, it's not about what you do, but who's the person who did it. It is important for us to know that. It's a question of whose words, who said it or who wrote it, who made that statement in verse 138 in the New Living, New Living Bible. It says here, your laws are perfect. Therefore, God's word is true and it will never be at fault. God's word is infallible. Wala pong mali sa Bible. Wala pong mali itong manual na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Can you imagine for how many decades and how many generations and centuries with all different authors putting this book together? My friends, if there is such thing as a miracle, it's the word of God. He put it all in this book so that the generations will know Him. So that the generations will encounter His covenant. So that the generation would know that no person will be saved apart from God Himself. God's Word will never fail. His Word is totally righteous and will always be righteous. God is righteous forever, and so His words. In verse 142, it says, Your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is true. My friends, God's word is always righteous because the author is righteous, and he is true. The psalmist, choose the word. Why? Because the author is righteous. Because the author is true. Therefore, God's word is righteous and is true. Number two, God's word is reliable in all circumstances. Why do you choose the word? Because it's reliable. You can depend on this God. Whatever he says... That settles it. Pag sinabi ni Lord, ito mangyayari, ito mangyayari. Pag si Lord nagbigay ng promise, mangyayari yan. Ang problema sa atin, gusto natin agad-agad. Gusto natin, pag may need, Lord, ibigay mo, nasan ka? Di ba sinabi mo mangyayari to? Bakit hindi nangyayari? Si God ka ba? Para may control tayo kay God pag promise ang pinag-usapan. Lord, ilang beses na ako, prayer and fasting, nagpipray ako ng partner. Pag puro part lang. Walang nerve. Baka mahulog ako. <laughs> Lord, tagal na healing. Lord, bakit ganun? Naudlo dahil sa pandemic. Akala ko ba, Lord, mangyayari to? Pero... It's the other way around. 
that doesn't mean, does that mean that God is not true in His promise? Does that mean that you can never rely on God? Verse 140 says, your promise is well tried. And your servant loves it. My friends, regarding God's promise, there might be some delays, but that doesn't mean that the promise will not happen. I know a person who was believing God for the promise of God to come. It did not happen before the pandemic. When the pandemic hits, believing God for this breakthrough and believing God for this miracle, all the more, almost lost everything. But he did not give up. There was even a moment that he started to lose that grip of the promise of God. Marang kinikwit, but Lord, but ganon? Kasi nakatuon tayo, nakatingin tayo, nakafocus tayo sa problema. Ang gusto ni Lord, mag ka sa Kanya. May hinaharap tayo ngayon, may mga problema tayo. Nakikita natin problema. Sometimes the problem highlights your circumstance and we begin to focus on that. And because of this, you begin to question the Word. Correct? God is faithful. God is true. God wants to assure you that He was there for you. You might not see it, but His Word is true. And everything that He has promised, I believe the Lord will let it come to pass at His given time. There's such thing as the Lord's timing. There's such thing as the Lord's ways. There's such thing as the Lord's working. There's such thing as the Word of God will be fulfilled in our lives. One of the things I claim is what, what God has said in Philippians. Whatever He has started in our lives, Siya po ang panimula. Siya po ang nagtalaga. Nandito ka ngayon dahil sa Kanya. At hindi sinasabi yung gitna. Pero ang sinasabi ni Lord, whatever He has started in our lives, He is faithful to complete it. Sana naman yung faithfulness ni Lord, wag bukas na mawala na ako, mawala tayo. Hindi ganun po si Lord. Maasahan niyo ang Panginoon. The God's word is proven in all circumstances. What was the psalmist's condition? He said, I am small and despised. He was insulted. The, more, the other translation said, I was insignificant. I was lowly. I was despised. I was rejected. But he says, I do not forget your precepts. Even though the people that I love, the people, my community have rejected me, the people that I love all of a sudden rejected me. Lord, it doesn't matter. I will not forget your word. I'm here today not because of them. I'm here today because of your calling, because of your word. And I will never forget that. Because you've never forgotten me. Kaya hindi tayo titingin sa tao. Hindi tayo titingin kay pastor. <laughs> tao lang din eh. Ano sinasabi ni Lord? He was rejected. Ha, hindi ako pinansin. Hindi ko nakuha eh. Pastor ka pa naman. Ka pa naman leader ko. Kung pa naman, Pastor Jonathan. <laughs> Kung pa naman, Pastor. Pastor Anthony. Oh. Mati ko pa. Brother Goods. 143 says, Trouble and anguish have found me out, but your commandments are my delight. 
He was in anguish. He was in trouble. There was affliction, suffering, pain. In other translation, it says, in other translation, nabura yung other translation ko. Meron dito ako nilagay. Anyway, <laughs> recently, a week ago, honey, tama ba? We went to this restaurant. The owner was part of our church in Metro East. The lady who owned that is a Vietnamese. So it's a Vietnamese restaurant. Maligit lang siya sa Marikina. And uh, the lady had cancer and continuous chemotherapy and all this uh, treatment. And the daughter was telling us, Pastor Mark, grabe si Lord. Hindi namin alam kung saan kukuha ng pera. Millions na yung tagagastos namin. The amazing thing about mom, who will be 70 years old, 70 plus, after ng chemo niya, sa mall pa to, diretso siya talaga naglalakad, kumakain pa. Grabe yung word ni God. Yung pinapakita niya sa amin na miskin hirap kami, miskin may struggle, hindi namin alam yung condition ng mami ko. Nakikita namin yung, yung healing, yung strength, yung faithfulness ni God. And we were blown away. We haven't seen them for quite some time because of the pandemic. What are we saying here? God's word is reliable and His promises will never fail. You can depend on God. Let me ask you this. Are you being rejected today? Are you in trouble? Are you in pain? Are you in suffering? Pastor Anthony, give a word and... I've, we feel you. And the healing that I believe Pastor Anthony was telling, it's not just the healing physically, but the healing in your soul. And some of you here have been suffering because there's something about your soul that is not right. And it's cost you your faith, your treatment with others. And I want to say this, the Lord is healing our soul. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Anthony, for being sensitive. God's word is reliable and his promises will never fail. Hold on Amen. to his promise no matter what. It's not about us. It's not about the church. It's about, it's about the God who called you, who saved you. And his promise will always be true. And he will fulfill every promise that he said. Can you say amen? Number three, God's word is valuable. In verse 140 says, It is valuable. Your promise is well tried, proven and faithful, proven and true. And yet, the psalmist says, Your servant loves it. Verse 141, I'm small and despised, but I do not forget your precepts. Can you imagine how valuable God's word to this psalmist is? He has faced all these kinds of testing and trials and battles in his life, but yet he would still go to the Word and get into the Word and embrace the Word and let the Word be the one who will sustain him. Nakalimutan na po ba natin yung sinasabi ni Lord? The Lord wants to remind you of those promises. The Lord wants to remind you of His Word. Para may song na, Kunin mo na lang lahat sa akin. Ano yung susunod? Huwag lang si Coco Martin. Huwag lang si Coco Martin. Hindi ba lang? Wala ako si Rula. Bilang lang naisip, di ba? Para naisip ko na, di ba? Lord, kunin mo na lahat. Huwag lang yung word mo sa akin. Huwag lang yung promise mo, Lord. Kasi sa totoo lang, di ba? Heaven and earth will perish. All these temporary things, including our lives. Ang dami na wala sa atin. Yung pandemic. Pero yung word lang ni Lord, if not for His word, I don't think we'll be able to make it during this pandemic. But there's more to it that you can never imagine. 
Verse 143, trouble and anguish have found me out with all this circumstance of being the lowest point of his life. But here's what he says, but your commandments are my delight. With all the different circumstances that the psalmist have experienced, what's important, what's valuable, his first love, he will always go to the Word of God. Lord, your word, Mo. I value your word. I don't, I don't just choose your word, but this is my life. My prayer is that we will have the heart of the psalmist. He would say, I love your promises. I do not forget your precepts. I would embrace and let your commandments be my delight and my joy. Yes, I will face trials. I will face all this bad stuff. Have you ever, ever heard about the term, why, why this good people encounter bad stuff? Well, I'm not supposed to experience that because I'm righteous. Who said so? All the more. But we could rely on God's word. Would you love the word of God just like the psalmist loved his word? He valued the word. Remember this book. The name of the author is Eugene Peterson. He was writing an introduction of this book that he gave an example of how a dog, when a dog gets a big bone, may isip ko tuloy yung, pero po kami aso, yung, Belgian Malinois. Pangalan niya si Bruce. Brucey. He's a 10-year dog, old dog. And uh, after we eat all the bulalo, di ba? So yung mga liitid, yung mga galaw-galaw pa. <laughs> Iwan namin yung, you know, bibigyan namin yung buto sa kanya. Ay, nako! Piesta si Bruce. He will make ngat-ngat. He would know it. He would lick it. He will turn it around. I said, if you're going to get it, the bone, parang hindi niya kilala ko. Hala ko ba? Hala ko ba loyal? Ba't ba ganun? He would love, he will not let go of the bone. He would love it to lick it and eat it. And it would go for days. According to study, it will go for, for 10 days. Parang missions lang, 10 days, Pastor Jonathan. <laughs> but for my dog, it's around 3 days. But he will get that bone as if he owns it. He delights in that. It was his joy for him to get that bone. And Eugene Peterson, the author, would say, you eat this book. That's, I want to encourage you to get that book. Eugene Peterson, eat this book. That's the way we deal and get this word. This is life for us. God's word is valuable. Is that book gives joy and delight in you. The author would conclude in verse 144, your testimonies are righteous forever. He would go back and say, Lord, I would say it again. Your word, your testimonies, they're righteous forever. And he would say, give me understanding that I may live. Why would he, why would he declare a prayer? Lord, give me understanding. He would acknowledge again the author. My friends, you will never encounter the Word unless you encounter the author of the Word. He would say, Lord, I need your help. I'll not be able to make it. I'll not be able to understand if not for your understanding. The psalmist would go back to the God the author of the word. And he would say, give me understanding. In other translation, it says, give me understanding, which is the ability to learn and a teachable heart. 
Lord, if I understand this, as I read, if you give me understanding, I will live. What was his point? It's about relationship. It's about walking. Author of that word, who is the creator, the one who has shown faithfulness in Israel, and yet Israel failed, there's no other choice. He has to raise someone on his own, sent his son, Jesus, to be just like us, experience all temptation, experience all this trap to sin, but he remained righteous, perfect, one missed, one sin of Jesus will defeat the purpose and the plan of God. And because of what Jesus has done, righteous people start coming in. He was able to put the word together. And we are the fruit of that. And still, there is no plan B. Plan A goes, it's all about relationship. The author says, give me understanding that I may live. Who's the one who's going to give us understanding? The Word of God says, God has given us a helper, a counselor who will go alongside with us forever. He's the one who will enlighten us, illuminate the Word for us to understand so we may live. How do you live? Your job comes from here. Your promise, you believe in God for this promotion. All that is temporal, but not this. Understanding for us to live in this life. My friends, as we choose God's word, the spirit of truth, the spirit of understanding, knowledge, and wisdom is the one who will unveil all this. As we choose God's word, the Holy Spirit will help us understand so we may live, but you have to make a choice. As we choose God's word, and read the word, the Holy Spirit is there to enlighten, to illumine the word of God for us to understand so that we may live this life. Can we worship the Lord today in our response? Can we all stand on our feet? And in humility, can we all acknowledge God just like the psalmist has acknowledged the author of the word.
sing this one more time with all our hearts we sing Jesus. Now, while we're worshiping, how many of you, the Lord has spoken to you this morning that God's word is righteous and true. His word is reliable and His word is valuable to us. You know, as every eye closed and every head bow, we will be praying. You know, I believe the Lord wants to establish our faith. The Lord wants to secure our hope and as we listen to that preaching I do believe as God has spoken to me the Lord rekindled something in me the Lord has also did something in your hearts today or maybe as while as, as you were listening God wants to assure you that he is doing something in your life and yet admittedly you're saying Lord I'm having a hard time Thank you for reminding me today, but my prayer is that help me to hold on. Help me to continue to believe. Help me to strengthen my faith. You know what the Bible says? Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. If you're here today, you're saying, Lord, I'm going through something. I'm believing you, Lord, for something, Lord. But help me, Lord to be faithful. Help me, Lord, to continue to believe. Help me, Lord, to stand, to understand, and to stick around, to continue to hold on, Lord. I don't know until when, but Lord, thank you because you are faithful. Help me to trust your timing and help me to trust your purpose in your ways. If that's you, would you please raise your hand so that I can pray for you? We can stand with you saying, Lord, I need faith today. I need faith today. Whatever that is, whatever area of your life that you need faith in, say, Lord, that's me. Lord, thank you. You see these hands. Thank you that even right now, Lord, whatever it is that we are believing you for, whatever it is, Lord God, it's causing us, Lord, to doubt. That is causing us to sin because we have this unbelief in us, Lord. We are worrying. We are anxious. Lord, today we surrender it at the foot of the cross and say, have your way. We choose not to focus in our own circumstances, but we choose to fix our eyes on you. Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Thank you that the word of God, the Bible that we read is righteous and true. Because the God that we worship, the author of the book, the author of life, is righteous and true. And with that, we choose to believe. And we will continue to believe, Lord. We honor you. We bless you. Another thing that I would like to pray for us, Pastor Mark shared to all of us that God's word, the psalmist says, God's word is valuable. You know what the Bible says? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And yet, our faith comes from hearing the message. And that message is heard from the Word of Christ. Maybe for some of us, our prayer, Lord, give me that hunger and thirst. Give me that desire. Just like that dog, Lord, who will eat that bone. Will go back to that bone every single day, Lord, probably because of the busyness of life, because the problems that I face, Lord, I let the day pass without going back to you and read that word. But today, my prayer, Lord, fresh hunger, fresh desire to read the word and to spend time with you. I believe that's our prayer for all of us. Amen. Can you all lift up our hands? Lord, today, create in us 
the desire, the love for you, Lord. Bring us back our first love. Let not our business, our pressures, or even our success derail us, Lord, from the reality, Lord, that your word brings life. Your word brings security. Your word brings hope. Your word brings strength, Lord. And today, we say, Lord, we will not let the day pass without communing with you, without spending time with you. Lord, if we need to wake up early in the morning, if we need to sleep late night, Lord, cause us, Lord, bring us back to that, Lord God, the altar, Lord God, where we can spend time with you, when we can cry out to you, when we can read that Bible, Lord God, when we can open that Bible, whether we feel to read or we don't feel like reading it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because even right now, you will stir up something in our hearts, Lord, and refresh us and rekindle us so that we can have that joy, Lord, that desire to spend time with you. Lord, Holy Spirit, enable us. Holy Spirit, refresh us. Holy Spirit, rekindle the fire in us. We want that word to be so alive and active in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is here. Amen. How many of you are ready to leave this place and be a blessing to others? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and grant you peace. Lord, we receive that prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.